The Shooting Rage. In this episode, Pages of History, a recon tank's hard fate. Round study, mid-tier 20mm aircraft ACs. And Metal Beasts, new American deck kick. It's time for us to take another walk along American aircraft carrier decks and meet the new local royalty. Please welcome the multi-role F-14B Tomcat, a top American fighter. Although, we'd really love it if it was called the Bombcat. Let's take a closer look. This machine is propelled by a twin turbojet engine with afterburners. Self-sealing fuel tanks are found in the fuselage and between the wing spars. The wing sweep angle can vary between 20 and 68 degrees. The nose cone hides an advanced radar system, while under the cockpit, we can see a forward-firing 20mm autocannon with an ammo pool of 676 rounds. Its hard points can carry infrared and radar-guided air-to-air missiles, conventional, retarded, and guided bombs, as well as rockets. You can also install a targeting pod to improve your close air support capabilities. As is tradition, we'd like to start with air battles, since this is where the new American top truly shines. Its predecessor had no issues with its flight performance, but the F-14B is certainly one of the best fighters in the game. For instance, it has set a new record for the total engine output, exceeding 20-ton forces. That's around 25% more than on the previous model. Moreover, the Tomcat is good in turn fights. With its wing straight, it can surprise even much lighter opponents. Of course, it doesn't mean you should start dogfighting just because you can and waste all your speed in sharp turns. On the contrary, it's much better to keep your distance since this new vehicle's forte is long-range air combat. The F-14 is still unbeatable in this. One of the things that help it stay that good is the legendary Phoenix missile. This Tomcat can carry a new modification of them, with even better chances of hitting targets than the basic model. The F-14B outperforms its predecessor as an aerial combatant in every way, but there's actually more tricks up its sleeve. Thanks to the new suspended arsenal, this interceptor can turn into a multi-role strike fighter. Its pilots can use classic conventional bombs and rockets as well as precision laser-guided ordnance, further improved with the optional targeting pod. And we also need to add that the Bombcat stays pretty agile with max load. It remains efficient even against top anti-air vehicles. Well, the new king of American aircraft carrier decks, the F-14, is truly a fearsome enemy in any game mode. And besides, it's so pretty. Sometimes a tank turns out really bad, and the military just discards it. Sometimes a great tank can't become popular because there's no factory that can mass produce it. But today's case is special. We're going to talk about the Panzer 38 NA. It had a great design, it passed all the tests, and there was even a place to make it. But it still failed to become popular. What was the reason for that? Well. First, we need to understand why the new Model 38T was required in the first place. Back in the 1930s, the Germans believed that armored cars would be the best recon vehicles. They were reliable and quick, and they didn't really need big guns. However, the invasion of Poland soon showed that wheeled machines couldn't escape roads. That was too big of an obstacle for good reconnaissance, so Germans prioritized off-road capabilities for their next recon vehicle. Poland was still fighting when they laid down a new order for a fast recon tank. The Mann Company was the first to try their hand at it. At the time, they were working on a Panzer II with a new design. That model was to have a torsion bar suspension and an interleaved road wheel design. Naturally, they used it for the new recon tank as well. However, the new Panzer II project was taking too long. The Germans would build prototype after prototype, see them all fail the tests, and try to fix their sophisticated designs. Blueprints would get old before they could leave the drawing board, while the military had to stick with the old models. 
In July 1940, the Škoda and BMM companies joined the project. Despite jumping in pretty late, they managed to catch up with their rival very quickly. We don't want to talk much about the Škoda tank, since it was a poor design that was soon discarded. The BMM one, however, turned out to be a strong contender. BMM was the company that made the Panzer 38T back in 1938, one of the best light tanks of the time. It boasted a high reliability level, a good chassis, and a planetary transmission. Unsurprisingly, the new BMM tank was pretty similar to the 38T. It was more than a modification, though. The name actually speaks for itself. The NA means Neue Art, or New Type. This machine had a stronger engine, a new transmission, new road wheels, wider tracks, and so on. It had welded armor parts on the hull and a welded turret. Compared to the old 38T with its rivets, basically, the Czechs reworked the old concept and gave it a brand new shape. The tests went buttery smooth. The prototype managed to drive 3,900 kilometers without a breakdown, if you don't count new springs. The Germans praised its perfect gearbox and great turnability. There were just a couple of minor issues to fix before the tank was ready. But then, the Germans chose to bury the Czech contender. They wrote in their test report that the Panzer 38 NA was worse than the man tank. First, they didn't like the 37mm gun. They stated that the Panzer II's 20mm was more compact and convenient. Second, the Czech tank had a lower range because its engine consumed more fuel. The report was obviously suspicious. In 1942, a 20mm autocannon on a tank was an outdated idea. Moreover, the military had previously approved a new turret with a 50mm cannon like on the Panzer III, and the Czech tank could use it too. As for fuel consumption, the competitor had a stronger engine after all. One of the prototypes also got a Tatra diesel that significantly improved its range. But it was all in vain. The criticisms never allowed the Czech tank to hit mass production. Man got that order instead, but its factories were too busy making Panthers. It had no production capacity for large numbers of light tanks on top of those. In an attempt to fix the situation, the BMM company retrofitted 70 old Panzer 38T tanks into recon vehicles with open turrets. They were still way too inferior compared to the 38NA, though. Following your requests in the comments, today's round study will compare the most popular 20mm autocannons found on mid-tier aircraft. These are the backbone of firepower for many planes, so it's only natural to have a feasibility study of sorts. But first, let's get a closer look at the contenders. Today we have the American AN-M2, the German MG-151, the Soviet Schwak, the British Hispano Mark II, the Japanese Type 99 Model II, and the Swedish Akan M45. It's not an exhaustive list of all the 20mm cannons in the game, but we didn't want to bury you with all the names, so we picked the most widespread models. We'd like to compare them in attacking air and ground targets. For the former, we'll be loading belts with fragmentation, high explosive, and incendiary rounds, while for the latter, the armor-piercing ones will do. There aren't that many things that affect autocannon efficiency in aerial combat rate of fire, ballistics, and the explosive power of HE rounds. Let's start with checking the first point on that list. The best rate of fire is seen in the Soviet Schwak and the Swedish Akan. Both of them can fire 720 rounds per minute. The German MG-151s shows an almost identical result with 700 RPM. The American and British autocannons can fire 600 rounds per minute and the Japanese weapon is the slowest here, with only 490 RPM. The second criterion is ballistics, which mostly depends on muzzle velocity. It can vary between different rounds in a single belt, so we'll have to look at the averages. This time, the leader is the British Hispano. The average muzzle velocity for its rounds is 850 meters per second. The Swedish and American cannons have a lower number, but practice shows it has almost no impact on their accuracy. The Schwach shows an average result, while the MG-151 and the Type 99 leave much to be desired. You'll need some practice before you can deliver accurate shots. 
Now, explosive power is where the German Minengeschoss truly shines. Each of those rounds has 30 grams of TNT equivalent. No contender even comes close, ranging between 6 grams in the Soviet rounds and 17 in the American and Japanese ones. Now, when you attack ground targets, the paramount stat is the penetration rate. We've got a lot of performance variety here, so we'd like to make two groups for simplicity's sake. Group 1 includes cannons with penetration rates between 37 and 39 millimeters. That includes the ANM-2, the Akan, and the Hispano. These autocannons can easily pen the roofs of most medium and even some heavy tanks. The Japanese, German, and Soviet cannons are unlikely to handle such targets since their penetration rate can't exceed 30 millimeters even at point-blank range. What this means for them is that they have to pick either open top or the lightest armored targets. Of course, there's more to combat efficiency than just cannon power. Your aircraft's flight performance is a major factor. Still, when you know the pros and cons of your weapons, it's easier to pick the right target and score more frags for your team. Which mid-tier 20mm autocannons do you like and why? Tell us in the comments while we answer some of your questions. The first question was sent by a player called Poom. What's the purpose of the F3D1's tracking radar if it doesn't provide lead? Hi, Poom. The F3D features an early model that can only detect a target. It doesn't have a device that would calculate lead for the tracked target. Jellyfox asks, What's the difference between the M18 GMC and the premium M18 Black Cat light tanks? Hello, Jellyfox. The only difference is in the gun namely the muzzle brake on the regular version. It has no effect on the game efficiency, although in theory, a large muzzle brake could catch a round that would reach the turret on the premium version. Another question comes from Azure's Stuff 2. What prop plane in the game has an engine with the most horsepower? Hi there. The most powerful piston engine is found on the American AM-1 with more than 3,300 horsepower. As for the most powerful engine on all prop planes, it's the British Wyvern with a turboprop power plant that can output around 4,000 horsepower. Karim Hamam writes, Could you do a history page about the MiG-23? Hi, Karim. We've had a page of history section dedicated to it in episode 257. It's still there on our channel. Check it out when you have the time. And the last comment for today was written by Potassium Filled Potato. Could you possibly do a triathlon between the Harrier variants, please? Hey, Potato, we don't really need a triathlon to see who'll win. The Harrier GR7 is head and shoulders above the rest of the family. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to give your bomb cat some treats, leave a like, share your thoughts and comments, and see you next week.